everybody. Welcome to Caregiver Crossing, part of our new video series. It's Sarah Shaddy. Um, Tina is, well, I don't know where she is because we're not together anymore, but it's just me today. But I am joined by a super special guest, uh, Mr. David Dellinger. Um, and we're going to find out uh, the really interesting topic that he's an expert in and going to talk to us about. But I want to start with his special connection to Joy's house. Um, his mother-in-law, Miss Connie, is one of our guests at our UND house. Um, and so he is a caregiver. Um, and so we're really honored to have him join us today because, you know, I know that this is a you know, strange time and a lot going on, um, but we just appreciate you being here, or being here. <laughs> um, uh, and you have a really uh, special expertise um, that I think a lot of people will welcome right now, which is gardening. Can you tell us um, what your certification is and maybe kind of what led you to be a master gardener? Okay, well, I'm a Johnson County master gardener. I have just gone through the three months of getting my certification. So I went through three months of classes and then now I'm doing my volunteer work to really solidify the master gardener title, if you will. Um, what led me to become a master gardener is I've been gardening for the last 20 years since I've been a homeowner and I've really just gotten into landscape design, um, orchestrating my perennial garden to make sure things are coming up all the time and I really wanted to take it a step further because I've learned so much about gardening and I wanted to learn more about gardening. Um, so that's just what really prompted me to become a master gardener was just the educational aspect of it and just learning more and more and really now I want to mentor people and help people into building beautiful gardens in our home. Well this is the time for it you know we're in officially in spring um the month of April and I think the month of April can be you know a lot of people might be a little confused about this time of the year I think there's this notion that gardening really doesn't kick off until around Mother's Day in that mid-May time uh, but when we were emailing earlier you said that's just not true there's a lot that can be done now. Yeah, so when I talk to a lot of people, I and I've been doing a lot of videos on Facebook because I've been doing my cool crop gardening. So cool crop gardening usually starts the late May, early April. I'm sorry, late March, early April. Um, but a lot of people think that they have to wait. Even my mother thinks, you know, because I've had conversations with her, she thinks that she has to wait until Mother's Day. And I'm like, no, you don't have to. And that is actually something that I've learned in the last probably five years is that you can start um, late March, early April. So what are some of the things that you can plant? So pansies, like your pansy flowers, are the first things that you can plant early spring. So I'm one of the first ones at the gardening center to get the pansies. So um, before all of this happened with the coronavirus, I actually went out to Meyer and I bought pretty much like three flats of pansies. Um, and that was, mid-March that I did that. So I've had pansies pretty much for an entire month now. Um, so I have flower boxes with pansies. I've got hanging baskets with pansies. I've got some planters in my backyard that I planted with pansies. Uh, so And actually pansies are a great thing to do in your flower boxes, in your pots for some of the older people who maybe can't do a lot of the harder gardening. Also, some of the vegetable crops that you can plant right now are peas, butter crunch lettuce, cabbages, any of your root vegetables like radishes, um, carrots, things like that, that really like the cool, cooler weather. And also we're getting a lot of rain right now. And rain as a gardener, we love rain because we haven't gotten a lot of rain in the last week and today it's raining. So I'm thrilled that it's raining today even though Connie, who's I'm the caregiver for, always complains about rain, but because um, she likes to go out for walks and stuff. But, uh, but no, I love the rain and I love to see the rain because the rain, there's nothing like the rain that uh, gives your garden the nutrients that it needs. Now what, um, obviously, like you said, you got to that garden center before um, our shelter in place orders uh, were effective. Um, now, I know that there's probably a lot of local gardening centers that will do curbside pickup if you call. Um, are there also online ordering options for seeds? Yes, Amazon.com is literally my lifesaver right now because 
normally I'm out in the garden center buying tons of plants right now. Like anytime I have, I actually always take a two week vacation in May to get my, to really get my vegetable crop going and to plant um, a lot of my flowers. And I'm usually out in the garden centers all the time during that time. But now because of the, what's going on in the world, I can't do that. So what I've decided this year is I'm doing everything from seed. The only thing I didn't do from seed or doing from seed are the pansies that I bought a month ago because I was able to get out. But I have literally bought everything from seeds. Uh, so like I just planted my lettuce, my spinach, my cabbages, radishes, carrots. I've done all of that from seeds. And then when May comes, I'm going to be planting tomatoes from seeds, um, peppers from seeds. I also bought uh, sunflower seeds, begonia seeds, impatient seeds. These are the things that I usually go and I buy at the garden center, but I've just decided that it's too risky, um, especially with Connie being here and she's 76 years old. We don't want anything to happen to her. She's definitely a high risk. So I wanna make sure that I'm not going anywhere to get her exposed. So Amazon is a great resource for those of us who literally are homebound and aren't going anywhere. So I would highly suggest uh, using resources like Amazon or even walmart.com, things like that. But I just find that Amazon pretty much has everything. They do, I mean, <laughs> seeds, anything. Amazon has the- yeah, Anything, yeah. So before we recorded, you did mention that Miss Connie is not a huge gardener. Um, but I know that there are plenty of activities if there, if there are other caregivers who are home with their loved ones. Um, plenty of activities, especially now, yes, we're in spring, the weather is warming up, the sunshine is coming out. So what are some uh, gardening activities that caregivers can do with their loved ones? One of the things that I think they would enjoy doing are planting pots. Like again, I, um, although I'm trying to think about what you can do as far as seeds right now. So, um, you know, you could get them inside and you could plant, uh, seeds in little Dixie cups, like sunflower seeds would be a great thing because it only takes about maybe two or three weeks to see, well, actually a week for a sunflower to actually propagate. And then in about three or four weeks, you can go into the garden and plant the sunflower seeds. So you, that's something you could do. And it's, it's kind of an immediate gratification because sunflower seeds um, definitely propagate very quickly. My wife is actually a pre-K teacher and she does sunflower seeds with her class too. And they love it. And they actually, um, will show her pictures on Facebook of the sunflower seeds growing and everything. So that's something I think that some of the older folks would love to do. Also, um, I think doing like gardening, gardening labels. So one of the things I did this year was I, I had some old paint sticks. And so I took the opportunity to paint those. I had some spray paint, so I painted those. And if you're, if you're worried about an older person uh, with spray paint, um, you can just get some regular paint and just paint over the uh, paint sticks and then write cabbage, write lettuce, write um, radishes on there. And then once it dries, you can just stick those into the garden. And then now they have a visual representation of something that they helped you with. So I think garden labels are a great thing. Also mulching, getting out and just um, mulching the garden. Uh, mulching is very important because it a lot it's it's weed control first of all and second of all it's going to allow the garden to retain the moisture so i think that's something they could enjoy um again just starting your seeds right now you could even start tomato seeds inside and then plant those closer to mother's day so yeah there's so much that you can do wonderful well good also there's a lot of also there's a lot of there's a lot of crafts too like you can actually get pots out, like ceramic pots you can paint, paint little uh, sunflowers on a pot. You can write their name on a pot. I mean, there's so many crafty DIY things that you can do in the garden. Absolutely, and right, it has that artistic all the different crafts. And I think too, just all the tactile kind of sensory things of being in the soil, mulching, all of that is just really engaging. Um, and then just spending time together and spending time outdoors, um, I think it's welcome right now more than more than ever. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a firm believer in spending time outside. I really believe that uh, the vitamin D 
keeps you happy, keeps you healthy, um, in moderation, of course, you know. Um, but as much as I can, I love to be outside. I really think being outside keeps us healthy, keeps us active and engaged in nature. One of the things I love about gardening, too, is the fact that it really gets you into the present moment. When I'm out gardening, I'm not thinking about what's going on in the world. I'm not thinking about um, what's happening in the news. I'm really thinking about this flower, maybe tra like I transplanted a lot of my um, dandelions this year. I have a cut garden in the back of my property and I transplanted a lot of those dandelions around my property because I, I felt like I didn't have enough flowers. So when I'm out there doing things like that, and that's actually something that a caregiver could do too, to help transplant spring flowers. But while I'm doing that, I'm not thinking about what's going on. I'm literally thinking about nurturing this flower, being artistic, being creative, getting my hands in the dirt, and just being really in the moment. And then once that happens, everything else just kind of melts away and it makes you happy. And it brings us joy and it brings me a lot of joy. And that's what we're all about. Love it. Thank you so much, David. We're gonna, I'm gonna find your uh, Facebook videos and link it when we share this video so that oh, people great. can yeah. check it out and find more information. I think you're spot on just finding those things that bring you joy and gardening is a great way to, to do that. Thank you so much for joining us. No, I really appreciate the opportunity and I think Joyce House is an amazing ministry and is an amazing opportunity for Connie. Um, it's really sad right now that she can't be there with everyone. When she's, I uh, tell Leah all the time, when she's at Joyce's house, she thrives. She just doesn't exist. She, she thrives and she loves it and she loves being there. And right now it's just a very difficult time for her because I think she's got a lot of boredom. We do try to play games and try to do things, but it's nothing like being at Joy's house where literally it sparks joy to her every single time she's there. And I can't thank everybody enough for what they do at Joy's house, the loving that they give Connie. And we just hope and pray that everything goes back to normal here in the next couple of months. And so she can get back to just doing what makes her happy and being with her friends. Thank you so much. We, we hope it's sooner rather than later. And we can't wait to see Miss Connie and all of our guests' beautiful faces. All right, well, take care, David. Thank you again. And thanks to everyone for watching. Be safe, take care of each other, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.